Hi everyone, I'm Mike from Comp3 Interactive. In this series, we're going to take a look at creating a scrollable shop interface that'll work on both desktop and mobile games. Uh, we'll be using our old friend scriptable objects again, along with some basic UI and automation scripting. It's really simple, it's really useful, so let's just jump straight into it. So as you can see here, I already have a, a little bit of a project going on. I'll just walk you through what I've got. So I've just got my main camera and a canvas. I've just named it Shop Canvas. Nothing special about that. I've added in an item window game object, which is the entirety of the every one of these elements here. Inside that, we've just got the basic window, which has the background element to it, a title, a place for a uh, item image to go, description box, box for the name, a button to buy and the cost down here. We also have some player parameters that we'll come to uh, later on in the tutorial. I've just got those there for the time being. Right. So what's the first thing we're going to need? First thing we're going to need, obviously, are uh, items. So let's start by creating a folder for our scripts. And then inside scripts, we'll create a new c -sharp script and we'll just call it item. Now we'll open that up in Visual Studio. Remove our start and update functions along with our system namespaces. We won't be needing those. And we'll make this a scriptable object. Everybody loves a scriptable object. Uh, I do go into a little, bit more, a little bit more detail on scriptable objects in my previous video, my item database one. If you're interested in a little bit more detail on them, go and check that one out. So we'll create a new file name. This will be called new item. And we'll create a menu name. And that'll be asset slash item all right so pretty simple what we need in our item class is a public string item name public string item description public int item cost and a public sprite item sprite and we'll just dress this up again a little bit with the text area attribute, giving us a bit more space in the inspector for the item description. And that's our item class completed. So we can jump back over into Unity and right click on our items folder, create asset, and here's our item. So we'll jump in with this. Uh, what should we make? We'll make a sword. We'll give it the name sword description. This is a pointy sword. Everybody loves my descriptions. It costs 100 and where are they? I already have some icons here, so we'll grab the sword. Uh, I'll put a, a link in the description as well for the, the packs that I've used, the UI pack and the uh, icon pack as well. Fantastic bits of design, these. Right. Uh, ba, 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 ba. What do we want? We want more items. Let's create another item. This one will make a wooden sword splintery. And throw that in. That'll cost 10. Oop, need to give that a name down here as well. Wooden sword. And we'll make one more asset item. Scroll, scroll, Ice Mage's scroll. I'm getting better. And that'll cost 500, and we'll throw the scroll in there. So now we have three items. We need somewhere for them to go. So we'll just create a new UI image. We'll call this one Shop Window. And we'll just give it a sprite. So again, I've already got some UI sprites. We'll throw that in. We will set to its native size and then just do a bit of scaling. 
Uh, if you hold shift, little tip, if you hold shift while you're scaling UI, it keeps the aspect ratio. Took me a lot longer than I care to admit to realise that. And we'll just place our shop window right about here. So now we want to make this shop window scrollable. So let's get on with that. So what we need to do on our shop window game object, we just need to add a couple of children to that. So we'll add the first one, which will be a scroll view. We'll add a child to the scroll view, which will be our viewport. And one more to the viewport, which will be our content. So the scroll view is going to be the area in which you want to scroll. So we'll size up this object to the size of a scrollable window, which is about here in my instance. And I'll add an image to it. And because I don't want to see that image, I'll just take the opacity all the way down. We'll also add a scroll rect. Now, this is the component that's responsible for the scrolling of the area. So what we can do now, we can take our content and pop it in the content box here. Uh, we only want vertical, so I'll uncheck horizontal scrolling. I prefer clamped movement. Uh, that's something you can mess around with. Uh, I'll put a scroll sensitivity of 10, and I'll also link a viewport into the viewport here and that is the scroll view element done onto viewport now the viewport is going to be the area within the scrolling area that the game will render now that'll make more sense in just a second what we'll do is we'll just make it slightly smaller than our scroll view we'll then add an image and this time we'll add a mask and we'll uncheck show Ma mask graphic so that'll just take that away but what that'll do is anything that is then a child of that image it will only render within the confines of this rec transform that we've just sized up so as you can tell that'll stop uh, when you're scrolling through your shop menu, it'll start culling the buttons at the top and bring them in from the bottom and just keep an invisible border around the entire area. Now finally, we want to amend our content object. Now the content object, we need a vertical layout group, which is responsible for stacking all of the items within your viewport vertically. We'll give it a little bit of space, so we'll add five points of padding in between each button. We want to make sure that the alignment is upper center. And the last thing that we need to add here is content size fitter. And both horizontal fit and vertical fit will be at the minimum size. Now, as you can see, our anchor is smack bang in the middle of our scroll. That's not ideal because the first time we put a button in there, it'll come up right about here. So what we'll do, we can open up our anchor presets, hold Alt, and make sure that we select full stretch, horizontal stretch. And then after that, we release Alt and hold Shift and set the pivot point to the very top center. That's this one here. And as you can see, we've jumped straight up into the middle. Now, just to check this is working, we can add a button to our content game object. We see it drops in straight at the top. Now, I think this may be a quirk with Unity, but as you can see, it started off straight outside of our, um, our culling mask. But if we play the game that snaps into place and then everything's fine from then on. So if you do get that issue, just try and play your game and see if it rectifies it. And just to make sure our scrolling's working, we can 
duplicate this button multiple times, hit play, and I'll just make this a little bit bigger. We can scroll through every one of our buttons. So it looks like everything's working as we expect. That's perfect. Now we'll just get rid of all of these buttons and then we'll move on to the next step. The next step being assigning all of our items, our scriptable object items here, to an individual button. Now we could do that by duplicating our button as many times as we need, creating a new script for the button and assigning a scriptable object to that. That'll work, that's fine, but it's very time consuming and in a couple of days, weeks, months down the line when you're developing your game, you realise that you need more items adding and you've got to do the whole process again. Now, we're smarter than that and we're a lot lazier than that. So, in the next, uh, in the next episode, I'm going to show you how to automate that process. So, all you have to do is drag and drop the items into a single location and all the button generation is taken care of, taken care of for you. And that about does it for part one. Make sure you check out part two where we'll continue expanding on our shop interface class. We'll add a little bit more, make it look a little bit nicer. I don't want to spoil anything for you, but you're going to love it. <laughs> Alright, I've been Mike for Com3 Interactive. I'll see you again soon.